This presentation gives an overview of the simulation parameter objects in Energy Plus. The first object is the version object, which identifies the Energy Plus version that this input file is compatible with. When Energy Plus has a new release, there is an automatic transition utility which will upgrade the old IDF file to the new version. Next is the simulation control object. This object controls whether sizing calculations are done for zone, system, and plant. Normally, I just leave these always set to yes. There are other objects and inputs that will control whether sizing calculations are done. The next is run simulation for sizing periods and run simulation for weather file run periods. This means to simulate and produce output results for one of these two kinds of periods. You can set them both to yes, but normal usage is to start with the sizing period set to yes, the weather file run period set to no. Sizing periods are generally short, provide a quick turnaround for model development, QA checking, and troubleshooting. Then once the model is fully working for the sizing periods, you can turn the sizing periods to, to no, and then set the weather file periods to yes and then run the full annual simulation if that's what's desired. Next is the building object. This is a multi-purpose object which specifies a name for the run. Uh, this is where you would put any kind of identifying information for what this alternative or project file represents. There's a north axis to rotate the building uh, terrain to alter wind speed versus height profiles for convection and infiltration calculations. There are a couple of tolerance values and maximum number of warm-up days. These relate to the simulation initialization process. For every environment, whether it be a sizing period or weather file run period, Energy Plus needs to initialize the temperature history and the surfaces. This is done by repeating the first 24-hour day of the environment until convergence is reached based on loads and temperatures in the zones. There's a limit by default of 25 warm-up days. If this is exceeded, there will be a severe warning in the error file and it indicates a problem with the model. Either the building is way too massive or there is some imbalance that causes the building to just get hotter and hotter or colder and colder on each repeated day. The tolerances should be left to default. The other key input in this building object is called solar distribution. There are multiple options for solar distribution. First is minimal shadowing, which means there will be no exterior shading calculations. All beam solar which enters through windows will be placed on the floor of the zone that it enters. The next level is full exterior, where all exterior surfaces and shading surfaces are fully shading. All the self-shading is calculated. At this level, the beam solar which enters the zone is still put on the floor. The next level is full interior and exterior, which now projects the direction of the beam solar into the zone and determines which surface it falls on at each hour of the day. The next level adds reflections to full exterior or full interior and exterior. When reflections are turned on, exterior surfaces and windows reflect automatically. Shading surfaces will reflect if additional properties are added to them. Each step up in the solar distribution comes with more accuracy, but also comes with the increased computation time. So choose the level which is most appropriate. The remaining simulation parameters are optional. Advanced usage, if you find them useful. Shadow calculation specifies the frequency at which Shadow positions are recalculated by default. This is done once every 20 calendar days because the sun position from today to tomorrow does not change a lot. If you have detailed shadowing in the model or shadowing is an important feature, then you may want to increase the frequency by putting a smaller value in this field. There are objects to control the convection algorithms for inside and outside surface uh, heat balances. There are optional advanced objects for the surface and zone heat balance algorithms, uh, zone capacitance multiplier. There is a zone air contaminant balance option to turn on a carbon dioxide concentration simulation. This is off by default. Time step is the number of time steps per hour used for the building zone surface simulation. By default, this is six time steps per hour. 
And then there's an advanced object called convergence limits, which specifies controls for the system HVAC time step, which can be shorter than the zone time step at certain times when temperatures are changing quickly in one or more zones.